Welcome to What Dog. In this episode, we are in the studio kitchen talking all things dog food. Now, as you can see, there's a lot to talk about. So Chirag is here to kind of guide us through this experience. So Chirag, if I'm thinking about getting a dog, yeah. I've got some like basic questions around dogs feeding that I want to ask you. So like, what do I feed my dog? When do I feed my dog? How much do I feed my dog? And how do I feed my dog? So they're really good questions. So mm -hmm. let's start with the first one. What do you feed your dog? I think you have so many options yeah. and you can go with what you feel most comfortable with, what fits your price bracket. Mm -hmm. I would recommend going for a complete diet yeah. and also look at the life stage of your dog. So if you're going to get a puppy, mm -hmm. then go for a puppy diet. If you're going to adopt a older dog, then you might want a senior diet. Yeah. because they all contain different nutritional levels that help the puppy grow or mm -hmm. maintain an adult dog or help a senior dog. How are they different in diet? So what, what would a puppy dog, mm -hmm. what would a puppy diet consist of and then what would a senior diet consist of just so I can differentiate so, yeah, the differences? So a puppy diet might have more energy, rich um, sort of um, nutrition in there mm -hmm. uh, because the puppy's growing. And also yeah. even within a puppy diet, you get puppy diets which are for large breeds and small breeds because mm -hmm. with large breeds, if they grow too fast sometimes, that can maybe make them prone to arthritis or hip dysplasia. Okay. And so diets are really designed to meet the specific needs of those individual dogs. Yep. Whereas a senior dog, maybe they're getting older, they don't go for long walks now, they don't play as much, yeah. they don't need as much energy. So maybe the senior diet has more omega oils to help with um, brain um, function, keeping a healthy brain, Mm -hmm. um, reducing energy so your dog doesn't get overweight. So there's those kinds of differences in the different dog foods. So good to know. So interesting as yeah, well, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. So now next question, when do I feed my dog? Okay, so again, it depends. Yep. So if you have a puppy, uh, so most people get their puppies around eight weeks of age. Mm -hmm. um, so about up to 12 weeks, um, people feed their puppies about four times a day. Okay. And then after that to about six months of age, um, people tend to feed the puppies about three times a day. So kind of like, like us. Exactly, yeah. yeah, like us. And then after that, a lot of people put their dogs onto two feeds a day mm -hmm. um, and then maintain them at two feeds a day for the rest of their life. And from what age do you go to like two feeds a day? Um, six to 12 months. Okay. And it kind of depends. If you have a smaller dog, you may do it a bit sooner because they mature earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, what I do is I look at my dog's behavior. So a lot of times when I'm feeding the three meals a day, my dog starts to go, I'm not, I don't want lunch. Yeah, yeah. And so I just start <laughs> skipping the lunch meal. Um, and also as they get older, sometimes your uh, brain works differently. Um, if you've got diabetes or different kind of um, hormonal conditions or endocrine conditions, you might want food more often. Yeah. And so I always watch, one of my dogs is about 12 now. And so he's hungry most of the day. Yeah. Um, so rather than feeding him twice, I feed him three or four times a day. Like smaller portions. Exactly. Nice. Same amount of food, but yeah. just more frequently. Nice. And there was actually some really cool, interesting research. I hit the media about a year ago where a study looked at I'm um, actually like feeding dogs once a day yeah. is that better for them and does it help with their life like we do um, intermittent fasting and things yeah, like yeah, that yeah. yeah and the researchers of that actually said potentially feeding the dogs once a day could help have a healthier dog. However, they also said they wouldn't recommend people start changing the way they feed their dog until they have more data. Right, yeah, of course. And also it's like, you can't just go from feed, feeding your dog, say four times a day or exactly. three times a day, to then be like, actually, you're only gonna get one meal today, yeah. you know? It's, they've still got to adjust just like us. Yeah, exactly. You couldn't give us three meals and then expect us to just have lunch, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then next question, how much shall I feed my dog? Depending on which dog food you decide to feed, mm -hmm. um, have a look at the back of the packet. Yeah. And that's the best way to go. Each dog food has different types of meat quality. Mm -hmm. And so with one dog food, you might have to feed way more of that type of dog food compared yeah. to another brand where you'd have to feed way less. One might use um, sort of cleaner meats. Other ones might use meat that has less nutritional value. So you have to feed more. Um, so it's best to look at the individual brand. And is it does it go by how much your dog weighs? how much you feed them. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So it goes by the weight of your dog. At the back of the packet it will say, is your dog a puppy? Are they adult? Are they senior? Mm -hmm. And also, are they at their ideal body condition? Are they slightly on the chubbier side or yeah. on the le leaner side? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. based on that, you can have a look at the weight scale. And if your dog weighs so much, then you'd feed so many grams a day. Chirag, I don't really know where to start, but I suppose 
The first question I've got for you is like, on this table, what would be the most nutritionally dense dog food and the least nutritionally dense dog food? That's a great question because it is very confusing. There's so many <laughs> options and so many pretty colours to look at as well. Um, I suppose the first place to start would be any dog food that's licensed to be sold mm -hmm. um, is essentially good, nutri like has nutrition for your dog yeah, yeah. and it's a complete diet. So I think the best thing to look for is some dog foods say complete on them. So like this one, for example, will say complete dog food. Right. And other dog foods would say complementary. So if it says complementary, it just means you have to feed it with other dog foods. Mm -hmm. If it's a complete dog food, then your dog essentially gets everything they need. It's a whole like, meal kind exactly, of thing. Exactly, yeah. 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 Nice. And the, like the treats, these are obviously complimentary. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So the treats are snacks, bonuses they can get as treats, um, but you wouldn't want to feed that as a whole meal. Yeah, 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 got you. And let's talk about raw food for dogs, like yeah. raw meats and stuff. Yeah. Because it's very popular now to feed your dog just mm -hmm. raw meat. What is the reasoning yeah. behind that? Um, so people have started thinking dogs come from wolves, they're carnivores, and they eat a lot of meat. And actually, when we learn about dogs, dogs eat vegetables and plants as well as eating meat. And so also the movement of cutting out additives, chemicals, bulking agents. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people will get just meat. And because they say dogs wouldn't necessarily have their food cooked, they eat their meat like it is. Yeah. And so that's kind of the principle behind using raw meat. And it can be really good, like raw meat um, dog foods just contain 80% meat and bone, 20% fruit and veg. Right, okay. And then um, essentially you can just defrost it, give it to your dog as it is. But what you have to be careful is a lot of people will sometimes go to a supermarket, yeah. buy some chicken or beef and just feed it to a dog but that isn't complete. It lacks a lot of vitamins and minerals, right. hasn't got everything the dog needs. So even like here, we've got like raw chicken wings. Yeah. It, you, it would be advised to give your dog chicken wings, yeah. but say for instance, with some veg. Exactly. Because yeah? yeah. then that's a complete meal. Yeah, well, it's still not complete because okay. then you still haven't got all your vitamins and right. minerals. Okay. And with dog food, it's really complex. So um, dog food like liver, lungs, kidneys, all of those disgusting things that might go, ooh, that's disgusting, <laughs> um, actually have lots of nutritional value yeah. for dogs and so when we look at dog food it doesn't just contain chicken breast if it's chicken mm -hmm. it contains chicken breast but it, then it will contain offal and then it will contain bone yeah. and so when we do home diets or we're going to buy stuff from the supermarket and make our own dog food mm -hmm. it's really hard to balance because we can't get all the vitamin, vitamins and minerals yeah. and actually if they're deficient that can actually cause serious health conditions for dogs right okay so my advice would be try and go for a diet that's uh, complete and you get various ones. You get more natural ones, you mm -hmm. get more uh, processed ones, uh, but try and buy something that has everything in it. And this here as well, this is a new like subscription kind mm -hmm. of dog food. Would you recommend things like this now for dogs? Yeah, definitely. So I use a subscription-based diet for my dogs yeah. just because it's convenient. I go online, <laughs> press a button, and it arrives in the post um, every month. Yeah. So I never run out of dog food. Nice. Um, and then also, um, these guys are very eco-friendly. Like, there's not a lot of plastic. Yeah, great. Um, and they focus on having uh, good quality meat in their dog food, vegetables. And so it kind of depends on what your thoughts, beliefs and ethics are on, um, yeah, what you like. Whether you like to eat processed foods, whether you don't yeah. like to eat processed foods and you like to eat more natural foods mm -hmm. and what you want to feed your dog. And also, I suppose it's what fits into people's lives, right? Because exactly. Because that actually could be more time consuming if someone, it, it naturally, it doesn't fit in someone's life. Where yeah. if you're going to the supermarket, exactly. this style of food, yeah. it works. Yeah, and you don't have to keep this style of food in the fridge, whereas yeah. this style of food you might have to keep in the fridge or freezer. Right, so you. if you don't, I have a whole chef's freezer in my house that's dedicated to dog food. <laughs> so I bought a whole freezer <laughs> just for dog food. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so a lot of people might not want to do that. Yeah. And so um, it really depends, like you say, on what's convenient for your lifestyle and also what um, might work for your dog's health. So every mm -hmm. dog is different, just like humans. Yeah. And so for some dogs, they may not be able to eat um, biscuits and hard foods because they haven't got many teeth or okay. they've got bad teeth health, um, whereas other dogs, actually eating biscuits might be good for them because it keeps their teeth clean. Got you, got you. And we were speaking earlier as well, there's a thing that's called vegan dog food. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's that about? So um, it, the idea behind people not wanting to eat um, like um, kill animals or be able to yeah. eat, like eat animals. They want their dogs to be part of the vegan movement, okay. um, but also maybe saving um, sort of animals being killed and um, destroyed. Um, so basically, there are dog foods out there which are completely balanced, but they use other types of protein sources, um, right. which are non-animal based. 
And uh, would you recommend vegan dog foods? I've never tried it. Um, uh -huh. From what I've read, it seems to be a complete balanced diet. And um, I don't think we have tons of science to go, this diet's better than that it's quite diet. quite a new form of food exactly. as well for dogs, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. So I think um, as long as it's a complete diet, your dog's getting everything they need. Um, but only time will tell when there's more studies to go actually which dog food is better. Got you. And you also said something earlier about bugs being dog food. <laughs> it gets yeah. weirder and wonderful, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, who would have thought? Like, bugs are becoming, I think, almost like the new caviar. Um, <laughs> it's like, you see them on restaurant menus. Like, I don't personally want to eat one, but... Um, <laughs> unless I'm driving my car and the window's open, they go in my mouth. But um, <laughs> apparently, so when you use bugs, you're yeah. helping the world be a bit more greener because you're not killing as many um, animals um, for the diet, but also um, dogs um, a lot of dogs actually have allergies to various meats. Okay. And so they can get skin irritations, internal irritations. And for those dogs, having that bug-based protein could really help. Have you seen dogs eat the bug-based protein? Yeah, definitely. And they enjoy it? Yeah, they seem to enjoy it. I mean, I feel like dogs enjoy a lot of things, don't they? They enjoy yeah, anything you definitely. give them. definitely. I think it's more in our heads than it is for the dog. It's just like, oh, that smells good, that tastes good, I'm going <laughs> to oh, eat food. it. Exactly. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it doesn't really look like a bug, so it looks like any other biscuit. Yeah. Um, but it's just, yeah, got bugs in it. And then, Jacques, how do you feed your dog? Because there's obviously the generic way of, like, opting for a bowl and yeah. just feeding your dog like that. Yeah, and like it seems like it's common sense. Yep. Uh, when I first got a dog, I put a bowl down <laughs> and everyone does it. We don't question it. But yeah. how many dogs actually in the wild have a bowl that they eat from? Yeah, none. Doesn't none. make sense. <laughs> yeah. And um, if we think about eating as an experience, mm -hmm. um, for humans, some people live to eat, whereas others eat to live. Yeah. I know for me, I live to eat. Yeah, yeah, me too. Me yeah. too. Yeah. So <laughs> when I go, yeah, and I try new foods and the smells, the ways they're presented are so enriching. And I look forward to those moments. And so for dogs, it's the same thing. When dogs eat, it's not just about eating. It's about, I have to look for my food. I have to scavenge or hunt for my food. I have to break it apart. Never thought of it like that. Yeah, and Never. it really gives them such an enriched life and things mm. to do in their day. Like a timetable for a child at school. They have PE, maths, English. For a dog, it's almost like, I have to find my food. I have to find a way of breaking my food apart. Yeah. Um, and then if I have to eat my food and it's like a whole rabbit, I have to like munch on the bones and this, that and the other. Whereas if we just put some dog food in a bowl, it takes away all of that fun. And it's already ready to eat. It's like, as it's supposed to be, they have to do nothing apart from eat it, right? Exactly. They don't even have to cook it. Like, we, we enjoy our meals. Yeah. We cook, we prepare. They just have to eat. That's yeah. a great analogy, yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. like, how can we give our dogs that little job to do? Yeah. And when and think about a job, not a bad way, dogs actually love it. Like, um, And so we can do that by feeding our dogs in different ways. Yeah. So should we take a look at some of the ways we can feed our dogs that make it fun? Yeah, let's do it.